What's going on guys, Matty here from DCLblogger.com. I'm going to be doing a, a land market analysis video on the Decentraland land. Um, I do this, I used to do this weekly, but my Twitter kind of went nuts. So I've been, this is kind of, hasn't been done for a while. But I'll be going through the recent prices, the recent sales, whether they were worth it, whether people snagged good deals, um, what's on the marketplace that might be a good deal, the cheapest prices, land evaluations, far outskirts, lands connected to roads, etc, etc. So let's jump in. And we'll see what we can cover. So first comes first, if you don't know what the hell Decentraland is, it's a virtual world which is quite open. Um, let's make sure I'm recording. Uh, you can make whatever you want, like this. And you can see uh, we've made some galleries, um, soccer stadiums, there is um, conference centers, blah, blah, blah. You guys have probably seen screenshots of things happening inside Decentraland. They're all kind of really scattered around the, the world. And one thing Decentraland have done is they made a really big world. It's massive, right? It's, it is so big, it's like half the size of Manhattan. And can I kind of think of it as like a boat landing on an island. Island is completely empty. No one's built anything. And what normally happens in the real world is people start to build like little clusters of, con uh, not content, little clusters of houses and markets in the same area because that's where the first five or ten people are. As they kind of migrate to different places, they go set up over there. And obviously the land in between hasn't really developed yet. But these clusters of content seem to have all the activity, all the buzz. That's what we're kind of seeing in Decentraland as clusters of content are being developed. So what I'm going to be doing first is kind of go through where these uh, pieces of content, clusters of contents are becoming, and this activity is starting to become more and more apparent within the world, some of them. And then we're going to move to land values around Decentraland. Um, but quickly, uh, if you haven't seen the Decentraland map, this is the bird's eye view. And like I said, if you jump in, you see something like this. Uh, you can see this picture over here that, you know, we're little dots on the map and you can see this, we're all kind of watching a TV screen, but there's just probably a couple of land parcels. You can kind of imagine how big Decentraland really is. Um, it is really, really big. Let me just quickly open up the Explorer, my bad. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so when you jump into Decentraland, you've probably been like, well, there's nothing to do here. Where is everyone? It's usually because everyone waits for a certain event, right? Everyone is in the real world doing their own thing. And you rarely are there in Decentraland unless they're like building things or something like that. But what we normally find is that with the events, the events are what brings the people in the central, in a central location where everyone kind of meets up and does a certain thing, right? So we have Binance US birthday party coming up. We have Jose Del Bord, which is an artist uh, the comic artist dropping on 24th is doing some new NFT drops, kind of being celebrated in Decentraland. We have Decentral Games Casino Night on September 25th. We've got a bunch of different events happening. And so every time an event happens, um, it creates a bit of Twitter buzz and everyone jumps in. And that's where you see, um, you know, something like this, where Dragon City held their meetup, um, their launch party, and a bunch of people came in and checked out Dragon City. They went in and looked at galleries, and you can see a lot of people here, relatively a lot of people. And again, Decentraland is not VR, so anyone can jump in and do whatever they want. Um, it works on the browser, as I'm about to show you. Um, but that's kind of how Decentraland works. Um, it's like a it's it's um, a a world where it's is pretty much empty at any given time unless an event is happening. So if you jump into Decentraland and you're like, well, there's no one in here, yeah, because there's no events there. You can kind of think like. Everyone sits in their home, right, in the real world until there's an event and everyone rushes to that event. So that being in mind, um, certain content areas are starting to hold more and more er uh, events, certain areas within the world of Decentraland. So I'm going to go through a couple of those places. Uh, Crypto Valley has become quite popular. Actually, quick, um, what I might do is go through Voltaire District first. So Voltaire District is this area here. Crypto Valley is the one down here. And this and Voltaire, I think, are managed by the Decentraland team. And that's why you're kind of seeing some really good content because the team is kind of collaborating with companies and they're helping them launch their HQs, headquarters. And that's why you kind of jump into a Voltaire district and you see, oh, wow, there's Super Air over here um, that have a, an art gallery and, and they hold meetups and stuff. And my apologies with the delay and lag because I've got like three instances of Decentraland running. Oh, it's going to be faster. So, and I've got my recorder on, so my computer sounds like it's going to blow off but you can see there's some art here in the super air gallery and every now and then they hold a meetup um and then you got makers place that have a hq here and you kind of walk around um there's quite a few here you have mint base 
as we walk around the corner. You've got some art pieces in 3D, you've got pixel chain, etc., etc. And consequently, the land around here, so you can't really buy land in the district, but you can buy land around the district, right? These are all private land that's buyable. So you go to the map, there's something I should have explained earlier. But the land that is dark gray is all the land that you can buy, and light blue are all the lands that are currently listed for sale. So if you want to buy any of these, you have to make sure you have some mana. Um, let's connect to my wallet. And um, as long as you connect to the ma uh, wallet, you can see I've got 1.2 million mana. So I can go to the land and I can click whichever land that I want to buy. And then say I want to buy like this land here, uh, 600,000 mana, I can click buy. And then the land will be transferred to me so I can start to build on it. And then the mana will be transferred to the seller, right? So something like this, what I normally do before I buy is actually look out for an email address. And I'd be like, hmm, contact DCL underscore offers at PME. So I'll contact the email and be like, hey man, would you take 300,000 mana for this or whatever I think it's worth? And we go through a negotiation process before I pull that buy trigger so we can reach a price and you can be like, all right, well, I'll drop it for 300,000 mana on the market. You can pick it up um, or you can place a bid for 300,000 mana and I'll accept. So a bid is something that you can just be like, all right, well, I'm going to bid 250,000 mana, 350. Um, and then that will be, a, that will be placed there and the seller, when he'll be notified and he can accept that bid or decline that bid. That's how it works. Um, so that being said, and going through that, that little area, and like I said, so Voltaire District is kind of going up in value, um, or the value um, land around, maybe artists that want to come set up. You also have like Soho Plaza, which is down here, which is an RD district, uh, RD Genesis Plaza. So the Genesis Plazas, which are the green areas, they're managed by the Decentraland team who build areas there. So you can kind of see um, it's got like skate parks and stuff. So, you know, lands that are directly connected to the Genesis Plaza are usually quite expensive. They're usually like between 50,000 to sometimes 200,000 mana. In fact, some of the ones that are closest to Genesis, the center Genesis Plaza have gone up to like 500,000 mana sales. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. But what we're seeing now slowly is as the land develops. So let me close these areas. And... This is probably what you guys jumped into the central and were like, all right, cool. Like we're in the center area. You probably went over here and played a game. If you find two people, you can actually play a game over here. It's like a little arcade thing, reversing someone. And then you're like, all right, cool. Um, what is there to do around here? Like you walk around and you look at a few things. You look at the marketplace here and there. There's no one here. And then you kind of exit, right? But like I said before, everyone hangs out in events. Uh, people are located at different areas. So people are probably running conferences here. So at any given time, there's probably like 15 to 20 people scattered across the central land. But it's usually like we reach uh, instances of 100, 200 people when there's an actual event happening in Decentraland. So just wanted to clarify that. Um, so I want to go back here and I want to go through Crypto Valley. And what we know, what we recently saw was a sale that took place. Uh, I think it was this one. Nope. Maybe it was this one. Yeah, this one sold for 45,000 mana a month ago. And one second, hopefully I'm recording this. Yeah, um, yeah, this sold for 45,000 mana a month ago, which is pretty decent. And getting land connected to a you know Crypto Valley district or connected to there, which which I'm going to go through at the moment, you'll see that there's a lot of HQs being being um, pushed into. Crypto Valley District, you've got like, um, you know, Binance that have set up or are going to set up their um, Binance US headquarters in here. Game Credits recently did. GDA Capital recently did. Um, like we have probably another five or ten about to drop. There's quite a lot in the Matic have a land in there. So as those projects kind of get dropped all in this little district, the land around there is kind of going up in value, right? More people want to, more businesses may want to set up shop or VC firms might want to build. So they buy these lands for sale around the area. So you got to keep that in mind when doing your valuations. Um, I'm going to quickly go through what is in here. So um, it might take me a long time to actually walk around. Again, I'm like going through so much lag because, you know, Decentraland runs on the browser. So if I have like three instances open and I'm doing like a video screen and my RAM and my internet's being like maxed out. So we've got Matic that have a building in here. They sometimes run conferences um, or we sometimes run conferences in there. Um, you got the game credits that's loading here. The green boxes mean that something's loading. So when that loads up, we'll see something in there. What you normally see is you'll see like these 
you know, these random trees and grass areas. These are kind of like placeholders and you'll see like random static content like these fences, etc. And I'm going to go through why you see that. So game credits have an area here. You have the conference, little conference room over here. Um, we have the conference uh, convention center, which is where we run our big conferences. I think we, we recently did like a um, DeFi conference over here, so it's kind of loading. Um, this is being optimized as we speak. So usually it's a process of optimization, so GDA capital uh, over there. And as they kind of make it quicker and faster to load and as the internet gets better and better, this technology should allow like, it to be very, very fluid. And especially if the central line ever go to a, a um, isolated client, then it might be even, even more quicker. So this is the conference, uh, con there. conference val uh, Crypto Valley Convention Center. There you go. Slowly loading around us. So we've got um, crypto motors, et cetera, et cetera, right? So basically the bottom line is HQs are dropping in here. Headquarters, people are setting up, companies are kind of setting up shop around this district. So the area is going up in value. I know OpenSea have a spot around here, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to go to the cheapest land, and let's kind of go through the recent, let's, let's quickly go through the cheapest land at the moment on the marketplace. Then we're going to go through... Um, the recent sales and we'll kind of do some commentary on the the recent sales. So cheapest prices right now are 9,000 mana. If you go through this, go to this thing called the land bot, which I always be connected to. And the process of learning about the Decentraland marketplace and getting valuations, understanding valuations is, is really, it takes time. You can't learn everything in the one day. I've been connected to this bot and checking up prices every time a sale happens. I'm like, okay, cool. And I check out the price, I check out the location, I understand what something is worth. And it's, if it's underpriced, then I kind of go check out the location and see if there's others that want to sell it around there. So I keep in touch with the land prices every time something sells. And a lot of other people that know the valuations really well, they also do the same thing. So it's really a process. So you can see this one sold for 8,000 mana. Um, this land sold for 8,000 mana. Uh, this one sold for 9,000 mana. And what you normally find is the cheapest sales. So if you go through the cheapest listed lands, you normally find that they're on the far outskirts of Decentraland, right? So this one over here is kind of in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around them, kind of in the far, far outskirts, um, especially something like our first one we saw. This is in the bottom southeast, right? There's, there's not much here. We've got Dragon City District, which is slowly starting to form. Like there's a little area over here that looks pretty cool. I mean, there's some um, art galleries. This is only one side and they've got some stuff on the other side, but there's a bunch of, there's like a big Buddha statue and they're slowly kind of building it out to like being a, a Chinese district or a hangout. So it should be pretty popping with the Chinese community as blockchain and NFTs and the virtual world grows in the Chinese uh, you know, country and, and area. And as that grows, the, the Dragon City should be pretty big. So you know, it could be a decent place to buy some land if you are speculating in that industry. Um, but normally, yeah, the cheapest lands we see are, uh, God, where was I? 9,000 mana. So yeah, that's why we saw those lands sell for 8,000 mana because as soon as someone listed it for 8,000, someone bought up. And that's why we normally see this, these, the lands that sell are around this value at 9,000 mana because they are the cheapest and they're probably the most logical entry for people that just want to park some money into this project and let it be. Um, and as you kind of go higher and higher, you see that you can get some lands that are connected to districts. You can get some lands that are a little bit closer centrally. These are, this is a land that's a little bit it's close to fashion district. So as fashion district starts to be built out, then these lands will start to go up in value. Um, lands connected to single roads. So a land that's actually connected to a road. Let's see what the cheapest price is for that. I think it's like 15,000 mana. Mm, there you go. So a land that's actually connected to a single road is 15,000 mana, right? <clears throat> so do you, and, and then roads are kind of like traversable areas. So people think that, you know, as the world develops, then maybe some of these other outskirt places, you have a chance of being blocked off. But it, the, with the roads, you have guaranteed visibility. So that's why those are kind of selling at a certain price. That's a little bit more, probably like double the price of like the cheapest lands. They're going up a bit more than the other ones. Um, so, and then you go higher and higher. And what you normally find is that suddenly lands that are connected to a double road. Let's see if we can find one. Probably not. Um, so looks like the next roads connected to next lands that are connected to a single road are about seventeen and a half thousand. Um, as you go, let's keep going. 
Okay, so we can't really find one that's connected to a double road. I was, I was going to try and hope to find one that's connected to a, a thicker road, which is double the size. We call it a double road. Um, okay. And obviously single roads, right, um, depending on the location, like some of them are on the far outskirts, or like the one that we saw I think was over here, but one that's closer to the center, so for example, um, this one, there was uh, this one that sold for 20,000 mana, it's a little bit closer, you can see, to Genesis Plaza, it's a pretty good deal, it actually had two sides that had roads, and it was um, pretty close to center Genesis Plaza, only like what, 15, 20 parcels away. So you know, this is the center Genesis Plaza we're talking about. So this is like the most central area where people spawn when they jump into Decentraland for the first time, like over here. The closer you go, like sometimes these ones are like 50, 60,000 mana for uh, lands connected to roads. Uh, lands connected to center Genesis Plaza itself is like 200 to 500,000 mana. Quite rare. Um, lands that are like connected to districts, depending on which districts. Like I said, if you want to get something you know, connected to this, we saw one land sell for <clears throat> 45,000 mana. Um, we saw lands connected to, say, Etheria district. Um, some of these have gone from 30 to 60,000 mana. Vegas City slowly starting to be built out. The Central Land University slowly starting to be built out. So lands, single roads that are connected to either of those districts are like 20 to 50,000 mana. Um, estates are larger than other lands because what you can do with estates is Estates are literally just lands that are next to each other that the buyer owns, but he's joined them together. The more you actually join together, the higher you can build, right? The higher you can, the more build height you get. So if you just have a single land, it's 20 meters in build height. If you have like 10 pieces of land, I think it's like 60, 70 meters. There's a log formula to it. And so these estates are actually really good value for larger investors that want to come in and say they want to build a, a game experience or something. So that's why um, my investment strategy is to get the large districts, the larger lands, because as people want to maybe rent areas, uh, maybe big companies want to get involved and rent my land, or maybe they just want to buy it off me. Well, there's not many to choose from. If they want something really big in, say, near conference, uh, they want to get something really big near um, uh, con convention, sorry, Crypto Valley District, and this area starts to, to develop, well, they don't really have many choices, right? They've only got my land, which is a big um, estate. The problem with estates is they're more illiquid. Rarely does someone come by with like, few hundred thousand dollars to spend on land or like fifty thousand dollars mostly they're people that have like five hundred dollars want to give the platform a go and that's why the lower cheap land sell quicker so if you want to be a long-term investor then it's okay to buy an estate but if you want to buy an estate and sell it like 10 days later probably not going to happen so that being um, said um, hopefully I've gone through a lot here um, but keep connected to the bot I'm going to be going through land valuations and sales um, hopefully every week but really quickly let's go through more sales so this one this estate sold for 160,000 mana uh, this one's in the center quadrant area so I think it's located um, here so one of these estates again like these four quadrants are kind of the center quadrants of Decentraland so that one sold for 160,000 mana it was like 13,000 mana a land connected to a single road and somewhat central. Not too bad, this one sold for 14,800 mana that's on the single road that's connected to somewhere center near Genesis Plaza. This one was nine parcels next to that other estate that we saw sell, again for around 13,000 mana. This one was a single parcel that's connected to a road for 14,500 mana, not too bad, it's cheaper than the cheapest one at the moment. Um, nine parcels connected to a district, I think at about 12,000 mana a piece. Um, this one's a land that is in the middle of a bunch of districts, not too far out. You can see the numbers aren't too high. 8,500 mana, not, not a bad buy, not a bad buy, just because the location is pretty central. And more land that's connected to near center Genesis Plaza on the single roads, 15,000 mana. So you can see that the range, as you keep an eye on this, and every time a sale is made, you just click on this thing and it'll open up the land for you and you'll be like, oh, well, that's the land that sold for X amount. Then you'll keep you'll have a really good eye for this stuff, right? Oh, damn. They need to change that. So, yeah, guys. Hopefully that sheds some light. Keep in mind that mana keeps fluctuating. So sometimes mana spikes up really, really, really quickly. In fact, before, mana used to be about 4 cents. And the cheapest land you can get on the marketplace was about 15,000 mana. But when mana went up to like 8 cents, suddenly people were like, well, if I drop my mana to eight to 10,000 mana, it's still the same fiat value. So people have done that. So... Whether you want to increase your portfolio in terms of mana or um, uh, fiat, 
or, or you want to buy land and, and build value in the Decentraland, build something in Decentraland and collectively build like the, the world and so that the land go up in value, then you can do that. Sometimes you've had whales just jump in and buy like a couple million dollars worth of land and the land market's gone bonkers and everyone's jumped in and, and the, the, the floor goes from like 8,000 to 15,000 mana just by like a couple of buyers. It's happened in the past, it could happen again. So dep depending on how you want to expose yourself to which market, you can do that. You got to have um, mana, obviously you can do that by buying it on Uniswap. It's like one Ethereum is like 4,833 mana when you swap it ends up being in your MetaMask wallet and then you can use that mana to buy land or buy different assets and you get that land as an NFT and that guy gets, the, the seller gets your mana. Um, another thing I wanted to go through is when you go into Decentraland you kind of go for an exploration you normally see a bunch of land that's kind of polygonal in the sense that it kind of looks a lot like uh, like this, right? There's a lot of this sort of stuff going on and that's because the very early stage when Decentraland kind of first started releasing its builder tools like uh, the builder, drag and drop builder, um, there wasn't many things to ch uh, choose from. There was only like, um, there was only, you know, this Genesis City pack and maybe a couple of others which was just like a couple of trees and like rocks and that's why you see um, there was 4,000 people that submitted lands. I think they submitted like 9,000 land uh, builds. And what happened, Decentraland just took all of that um, builds and they just deployed it all across Decentraland on lands that were not being used and lands that were um, contributed to what's called a land pool, which we can just deploy stuff on. Just making sure my battery doesn't die. Um, so that's what happened. And that's why you see in Decentraland a bunch of this stuff just with these kind of weird builds. Uh, look really static. But as the Decentraland... Builder has gotten a little bit more cooler. We've got like voxels and stuff we can do now. We've got drag and drop like galleries and stuff that we can kind of build. Uh, you can see this one. Uh, this one was made by Clark Kent, the credit to him to pass this gallery to me. So I can like drag and drop more things to this, but you can see things are getting more and more complex as time goes by. You can even drag and drop things from Sketchfab, 3D models, whatever you want. So as the world slowly grows and people start to build this sort of content, it'll start to change, right? And that's why Decentraland now is pretty much in its infancy. It's only been out in public in like six, six to seven months and we haven't even started ramping up our proper competitions. The DAO is well funded with like a few million dollars, a couple million dollars a year. So once we start to roll out these competitions and people are really incentivized to build a ton of really good content in Decentraland, we should start to see some gems and other places start to really develop in content and user base, etc. cetera. Um, that's it guys. Hopefully this has shed some light. Um, yeah, it takes some time to understand the Decentraland ecosystem. I do advise you just be in touch with Landbot. I'm um, getting in touch with some communities that build. I do know also there's the neighborhood district that have land here. So it's, there's like 20, 30 people that have clustered their land here. It's called a neighborhood district. Um, they have their own Discord. Um, where are they? Where's the Discord? Yeah, the neighborhood district which they all kind of hold meetups and, and collectively build stuff in there. You can see people, people have built galleries next to each other and stuff. If you want me to connect you to the neighborhood district, you can. There's land for sale there. Um, and that's a good buy if you want to be next to a community that's consistently building. And yeah, take some time to get used to it, but I'll be doing this weekly, so hopefully you'll be well informed going forward. Enjoy.